I'm Grant. Welcome to Second Plate, a cooking show all about reusing ingredients and cooking stuff with what you have on hand in the kitchen. So tonight we're going to be making some chicken corn chowder soup. It's a great di dish for winter. It's really can warm you up while also letting you throw a ton of like veggies in you want to try. It's a great thing to have in your repertoire. It looks fancy and honestly it's something I've been making not only to do for the show but just because I've really grown to enjoy it and it's a great use for some leftover chicken. So let's get cooking. Right here I have some green onions. I enjoy green onions. They do go bad a bit faster than others but one thing I particularly like about this dish is chowder is a very creamy soup with literal cream in it so it's white. So I like to have these and honestly even some regular red onions just to give it some actual color. And this is kind of a two-step process, I like to think at least, although this is just my kind of headcanon. But I like to put in the green onions because those get cooked down to little tiny flakes once we boil it. But then we also have the much like greater green in the parsley that's going to be going in for garnish. So we get like kind of two effects. So this is some olive oil. I'm going to heat this up on high. I've personally found that these onions, they actually work or cook a little bit faster than red onions because of a smaller mass. Let me actually go and put these in because they're going to reduce quite heavily. And really, a chowder is not that different from potato soup, which we've done before on the show. It's very thick purposely, but the main difference is the creaminess, plus the focus is not the potatoes, it's the cream and the thickness and everything else you put in, in this case, corn. However, you can also make clam chowder. Surprisingly, in Nebraska, I can't imagine I can get some particularly fresh clams. And while I've seen some interesting spots at like grocery stores for ingredients like that, I never trust them. Like I remember I, when I went to go get anchovies for homemade Caesar salad dressing, <laughs> I saw that they had just canned escargot, like snails, as well as some clams. I'm like, what are the chances that that is worth it at all to get snails in the middle of Nebraska when there's only literally like one can on the shelf in this one random area? All right, we're going to take this, add them in, get those frying up. Go ahead and just toss them, get the oil nice going around. I feel like you don't need to cook these nearly as much, so that makes them also a little bit more convenient, whereas normally if you're going to do like the thicker onions, like a sweet onion or a red onion, you'd want to have those go for a little while. Next, I have some leftover chicken. This has been, I just baked this before I came, so it is not raw. But I just baked it, cubed it. This is again like a perfect use for some like leftovers. So like if you look at our like, uh, fried chicken sandwich show, we just took off like a nice little like corner section and pulled that away. And this is a great use for that to just to use some uh, kind of like leftover stuff. So I'm also going to toss that in. And I'm going to call out th for this and for the potatoes. Let me just Google all this. I want to get these in early. Because the reason this is pre cooked is, first of all, it's convenient. But also, I don't want the final effect of the soup to have giant chunks of chicken. I actually want them to slowly uh, peel apart. And you can actually uh, peel out individual strands if you want to go ahead and do more work that way so that it all can kind of come together in the soup. So let me actually, before I get to the potatoes, let me go ahead and add some of my broth in, or sorry, stock. This is vegetable stock. You can use beef if you prefer, or chicken. It's kind of just preference. You can see that kind of cool down. Let me make this one nice and high. And let that start heating up while we cut this potato. I have to say doing that cutting the potato is like the more convenient, but it always kind of concerns me. Like it just feels like there's no great way to cut potatoes. And I ha feel like there's a conspiracy where you watch any like master chef cut a potato or an onion and somehow it never sticks to their knife, but I am never that lucky. And I feel like there must be some secret like are they spraying it with like Pam beforehand or what? Just gonna keep cutting through. 
And one thing, I actually do own one of these, is I actually own a uh, French fry, fry slicer that was a gift. And as over the top as it sounds, that thing can just completely tear through some potatoes. So if you have one on hand, feel free to go nuts with it. Because you essentially just cut into fries and then just cube it up from there. And as for the individual size of these, it really doesn't matter. The smaller you make it, the faster it's going to kind of liquefy due to the surface area. But I'm basically going to put enough in, and then I want to cover it up with my stock. I'll go ahead and add the rest of this. And bring that to a boil. And we're going to be adding in some flour just over the course of while we cook it to thicken it up. So I like to add some as we go, just so it can have time to mix in. Because actually having to go and mix it is something you want to do, because especially if you're using, say, cornstarch over flour, it will, it's pretty good at sticking together. So I like to get some in just so it goes. But if you don't have a masher, one nice thing about adding it like this, or rather towards the end, is the whisking of it's going to be actually breaking up the chicken cubes and the potatoes. So that when we finally go to add in the cream, it's an, ac it's an actual soup or a chowder where it's a thick liquid versus a chunk of chicken here or a chunk of potato here. Cool. So we're going to bring that to a boil. And we're going to let it simmer basically about like 10 minutes once it's boiling until the potatoes begin to soften. Because again, we want them to be mashable. So we're going to go ahead and let that go to a boil. Once the potatoes have been boiling for a good 10 or so minutes, usually I like to just fish one out and see about how done it is. It doesn't hurt to get a chicken cube in there as well. I'm just going to bring this over here and kind of crush them. And hopefully, you can see the potato, very good. Chicken, also very good. So set those to one side. And now I'm going to add the rest, or rather, just some more of my flour. Also, again, alternately, you can use cornstarch. That is twice as thickening, but it, it seems to have burned me in the past because it's so <laughs> against water that you can get these little flecks of stuff, kind of like you see now, except luckily that's our chicken. And you have to make sure you go through and actually kind of pop these reverse bubbles, so to speak. But I'm going to go through with this whisk and just kind of agitate this. This helps kind of cool the soup down, but what I'm doing is actually crushing some of my potatoes. And that's going to give us nice thickness and really thicken up the soup, while also, of course, mixing in the flour, which is a nice uh, double benefit. Because there are some soups that, if they're too chunky, you just can't get in there to break up the flour. Now, also, if, if you want full chicken cubes still in there, or full potato cubes, just feel free to add them in a little bit later, cook them a little bit less. Or one thing we've done previously on the show is actually pull some of it out and blend it. And that will give you pretty much the best of both worlds, where you'll get like the really nice, thick, creamy side of things. But you can still find a nice little lump of chicken or potato in there for the rest of the recipe to latch onto. An interesting alternate way to kind of do the same thing that I saw mentioned is you can actually add the flour beforehand. So say if you saute some veggies, you can toss in the potatoes and kind of crisp them up. And then add and coat the flour there when you just have olive oil. It'll kind of stick. And then you'll kind of actually also build up a nice, kind of a pseudo fried uh, skin on the potatoes and the chicken. And it's a, just a nice, interesting little variation, so to speak. I'm just going to clean off my whisk. You can see the onions starting to break down. And you can barely even see the green onions at this point. They're still there, and they're still bringing the flavor. But that's why we want to go ahead and add that parsley back in. So cool. Got nice little chunks there of chicken. So I'm going to put this back on, bring it back up to temperature, because there is going to be a sizable drop actually in the temperature once I add the cream. So we, here we have some buttermilk biscuits we cooked on a previous show. I tried to make them uh, pretty crispy, because what we're going to be doing is slicing some of these up and adding them in directly to, again, help thicken out our soup. 
as well as serving some of it alongside the rest. So I'm purposely going to crush these up and just toss them in and let that boil in. Luckily, these split really nicely with that crust. Add that in to boil and cut one more up for a couple different things. So one thing that this show kind of got me into was actually more of like the plating side of things. I don't usually get to do it outside of the show because <laughs> I can't really impress myself with my own technique. And most people don't want you necessarily to be that specific because like you're, they're not at a restaurant. But plating individual bowls of soup actually is kind of interesting because you can do some really neat things, kind of like we did on the chicken tortilla soup. So I'm actually going to take some of these and like we, I did with that, I'm going to purposefully place them at the bottom of my bowl because we're going to end up with like three ranges of sogginess, so to speak, here. We're going to have like the really like boiled down soft dough that's going to be these that are boiling. There's going to be these that are denser, but they're still like at the bottom of the soup. And then we're going to have some that we're actually going to serve on top as garnish, which just again adds some cooler looking colors alongside our yellow cheddar cheese and green parsley, but also it lets people go about eating the soup kind of in a unique way. Like, do you want to like, get those mealy? Do you want to save those on the side so you can have some crispiness to like sop up the rest? And then we can usually just all cut one up and serve this on either side just as a, a piece to either end or begin, because sometimes soups, when they start, they're too hot. Having some bread is pretty nice to just kind of get started on that. Or if you want to really clean your plate, you can use it as a nice little sponge to wrap that up. Okay. Then go back over here, take another look, mix this up. Start breaking down our bread, much like we did with our chicken. Gonna toss in probably another good amount of flour since we just added in our, in our bread. I want to Give that some time to boil down. Add that, thicken it up even more. Next we have the namesake. This is just some sweet corn. Again, helps give it some more color. You don't really need to cook it because these are already pre-cooked, but one thing I do recommend since you can get corn pretty cheap right now is I find it really easy to just while you're making the rest of the soup to buy some corn just on the cob. And while I intend to do a show on this eventually, you can cook it actually in the husk, and it comes out really easy. And then while you're waiting for this to boil, you can just kind of hold the whole husk over and just go tch, tch, tch. And it works out surprisingly nicely. Again, I'm just trying to spread this out where some of this chicken and the bread could use still more time. But since I'm going to get like a temperature drop every time I add some of this stuff, I want to do so just very finely, like break up the whenever I churn the soup or add ingredients. Because I think it's a novice mistake to be like, oh, I'm almost, I'm almost done. And then you just dump in like a ton of cold ingredients. And now it's like, oh, wait, I got to wait another 15 minutes for this to reboil. But you can begin just like seeing, like as I pull this out, it's starting to be thick and stick together. And that's kind of what we want. And at this point, entirely preference. I've said at the top of the show that one of the cool benefits of this soup or rather of soup in general is like, right now, just taste test it. Is it what you want? If so, pull it out. If not, keep kind of modifying it. Okay, it's gonna do a fair bit of salt. Bring out the flavor. I have noticed that most soups, I don't have to add salt, but this one really helped when I added it in. Got some vinegar, which I can talk about this. First of all, just a little bit of acidity in general helps, especially with soups. But also, I'm a big fan of getting your own containers for stuff, because like, my vinegar at home is like a jug. So I got these uh, little containers just for like, even my ketchup mustard. And they're so much easier to keep clean. And then you can still buy like a nice big bulk for a more cost-effective approach. So heavily recommend that. And I plan to can continue down that path for the foreseeable future. All right. I like to add just a little bit of sour cream. This is preference, but I think the sourness helps just a little bit, and it does come across, but I leave this up to you. If you like sour cream, add more in. If you don't, don't add any in. Totally optional. 
But you'll notice this is going to be taking on that kind of brownish look of a potato soup until we add our final ingredient, which is going to be the cream. Let me just add in a little bit of pepper. Continue to agitate it around. Kind of find a clean one, just kind of taste test. That's good. Okay. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of green with this parsley. I'm going to split this into two chunks. The main chunk, I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to dice it all up and then split it. And again, what this is doing is I'm just going for varying levels of greenness. So half of this is going to go back in there so we have some fresh greenness distributed through the soup since our onions have cooked down. And the other half is just pure fancy garnish, which I think a lot of people when they start cooking or just eating stuff, they're like, oh, parsley, that's just garnish. That's just for restaurants. Having something that's so starkly green in what is honestly, most soups are pretty like uncolorful, particularly potato soup. It really does like just make it kind of pop out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this in. And I think you can instantly see how it just like begins to look fresher because you have those bits of green that aren't fully stewed down like our onions are. And just makes it a little bit more appetizing. Continue to stir it. How finely chop it, you chop it is up to you. I'm gonna take the other half, save it for our garnish. Cool, got all that. Now we're gonna add actually some garlic powder. I'm trying to like go through all this stuff. I found garlic powder, particularly for soup, just a little better. Some days I'm just not that into chopping garlic, but if you prefer, you can do that. Saute it after the onions are done. Mash down that one piece of bread. And then we're gonna be adding in the cream. So this is just heavy whipping cream. And this will give it more of that kind of namesake whiteness that chowder has over regular potato soup. Just gonna pour it in bit by bit and stir it. And this is why I think some of the garnish is so important is you can get it to be this really nice white, which makes the contrast go even further. And that's what separates it from honestly the more bland looking potato soup. And part of me just really likes how it kind of all comes together at the end there with that cream to look just nice and almost like pure versus who knows what's in a brown soup. With this, it's like, oh, you know that's well made. All right. So we're gonna go over here and take our bowl and we're going to ladle this up and garnish it. Again, you can see the nice thickness of those other bread pieces, which are at this point are intentionally nice and soft. And we can just spread this around. Again, if you want more of a like liquidy soup versus like this more viscous one, you can put in less flour. You don't have to put in the bread, but I find it is a really nice touch because again, going back to how I like that sour cream, there's actually some sour cream inside these uh, biscuits as well as some cheddar cheese. So it just really kind of pulls it all together, but has it be nice and concentrated, which contrasts the fact that the rest of the soup is spread out. Okay, just gonna go through here. If you wanna be extra fancy, you can actually melt the cheese on top of it, just like in a oven. And then we're just gonna put our final few chunks of bread. And we have our chicken corn chowder. So it's a super nice upgrade to some basic potato soup. It's great for the winter and it's surprisingly good at like taking so many nice ingredients that you probably have around and turning it into a great impressive soup. So I'm Grant, this has been Second Plate, thanks for watching.